The avocado. This little guy and pretty much everything else in town has to take four separate plane rides to arrive up here in chilly Barrow, Alaska. Adam. Your material up there seems like it's running a little thin. What the heck? I think Barrow might have one great story left in her. This is solid ice. It goes for five miles from here to the open ocean. Three gray whales are now trapped in walls of ice six inches thick. You have whales in trouble and you didn't call me? I didn't call you because there's nothing you can do. There's always something you can do. I want to start off with you, Drew. Uh, first of all, you did an excellent job in this movie. Thank you. And what I loved is that your passion for the whales really came through in your acting. And I assume it's because you are an animal rights activist, right? I, I do love animals. I, I, I do. And I, I think this is, yeah, something I absolutely believe in myself. Um, I love getting to play the woman, you know, who is... Uh, you know, in real life, named Cindy Lowry, who was an amazing activist with, you know, an amazing feisty personality. And, you know, everything that I do in this movie, she actually did. So I was also inspired by her. I wanted to do her justice. Yeah, absolutely. What are your thoughts on the Obama administration and climate change? You know, there's been very little done in terms of climate change, especially because there's a lot of disagreement as to whether or not it really exists. I, there's a scene where we're in a TV station doing an interview, um, and, you know, we have a history together, and um, my character, you know, starts going off about, you know, plastic water bottles, and this is in 1987, and, you know, what they're going to do to the environment, and there's just this great, you know, exchange between us, um, but I, I sort of, you know, when we were shooting that scene, I was just sort of feeling so anxious about, like, I wish I could go back to 1987 and we could do something yeah. different <clears throat> um, and, and things would be different. So it was a really pivotal time. Um, and I think this movie, in a great way, doesn't hit you over the head with it. It's sort of one of those really subtle, intelligent ways of showing that if we had done things different, things would be different. What would happen if this situation back in the 80s happened today? You know, back in the 80s, you have all these conflicting entities coming together to save three whales. Would something like this happen today with the current political climate? That's a really interesting question. Would we get over our, because that's what this film is about all these different various groups, the military, oil companies, Greenpeace, Russia, White House, everybody who are such strange bedfellows got together. I don't know. I, I, one would hope. I bet, you know, yes, of course it can happen. Of course it can happen. You know, it, it, uh, uh, it's, it, we are capable at any moment to get over our differences and realize that we're the same and we have big problems and we need to fix them. It doesn't seem like we're doing that right now, but yeah, it's possible. Well, you actually played a very uh, great depiction of a local news anchor. Thank you very <laughs> much. So did you have like any type of training or something, or did you watch any local news anchors to kind of get the idea of like that? Well, uh, interestingly enough, my father is a news director. Nice. So I've seen him at 20 different stations and grew up playing with the teleprompter and um, knew all the local anchors who were celebrities in Detroit, where I'm from. So mm -hmm. I kind of ha almost have a background in it, but not really. I attempted to study journalism as a minor, and nice. it, that didn't work out. But um, yeah, I mean, I've kind of always been influenced by my father and what he did for a living.